If you've ever covered futures markets, you may have heard the terms contango and backwardation. So I want to discuss that a little bit. We'll take a look at a couple of graphs and try and understand what they are and why they look like this. Um, but what are they? Um, contango and backwardation deal with the relationship between the spot and futures prices of an asset. Contango occurs when the spot price is lower than the forward price or futures price. So some reasons the market is in contango include storage costs, financing costs, insurance costs, and even inflation. So the first three are what we refer to as carrying costs. So for example, suppose you buy gold. You'd like to have gold in a year. Do you buy it now or do you buy it a year from now? using a futures contract. Well, if you buy it now, you're going to have to store it. So you're going to have to have some cost of financing it because you're buying it now. You're probably going to insure it, right? And this is something that, you know, you're not going to use right now. It's not, you don't eat it, you don't use it to fuel your car, right? It's just some asset that you have, right? And you don't need it for a year. so. You know, you would expect the forward or futures price to be higher, right? Another reason that you ha that markets may be in contango is that you think the price is going up in the future, so you have inflation. And normally, we would expect contango to be the norm. So let's take a look at a graph here. So I actually grabbed some data from the CME Group. Okay, they used to run under the name of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and these are Oat futures, the settlement prices. Now you can see it's not a straight upward sloping curve, but if you look at the difference between here, March of 23, expiration date, and September of 25, this price is lower than this price. So this would be the case where here we're talking about contango. Now you can have the other term, backwardation, which is the opposite of contango, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And so you can have places where the market is in backwardation and the, then the market is in contango in different places. So backwardation um, occurs when the spot price is higher than the futures price. Okay, Some reasons markets can be backwardated, as they say, are the, a benefit to owning the physical material. So in order to keep production running, and we refer to this as the convenience yield. So if we're talking about oil, or we're talking about uh, these days, lithium is a lot in the news because lithium is something that's used in these batteries for electric cars, as well as for many other things. This convenience yield is inversely related to inventory levels. So when you have high inventory levels, there's a low convenience yield, right? If there's plenty of inventory of oil, right, there's not a great advantage to having a lot of, you know, to buying the oil now. If there's a low inventory, then there may be an advantage to buying it now for fear that there are shortages. And this backward dated market can happen because you have near term shortages that are expected to be resolved. So for example, you may have a hurricane that that hits um, you know, the Gulf Coast and knocks out a lot of oil refineries. So futures for oil or gas may go up. But we expect that to be resolved, and so the futures price tends to be lower. So here I went back again to the CME group and I got corn futures. And you can see, in this case, it's a little more consistent that um, we have a higher price here on for March 20 uh, of 2023 delivery than we do for December uh, 2026 delivery. So this is a backward dated market. Sometimes we say this curve is inverted. You know, this is not as common as contango but you certainly can see it happening from time to time. So let me mention two other things. We use the term contango and backwardation, but there are uh, other terms 
normal contango and normal backwardation. So normal contango occurs when the futures price is above the expected future spot price. And normal backwardation occurs when the futures price is below the expected future spot price. So this is a little bit different from contango and backwardation. In contango and backwardation, we actually have a spot price and a futures price. We don't really know what the expected spot price will be in the future. All right, but hypothetically, you get a graph that looks something like this. So suppose I have the prices, okay, today. So this is a contract that's due in one year. And the expected price, and we make it simple, we keep it at 60 um, for all these periods. So we have today, one month from now, six months from now, one year from now. And this blue line is above the expected price. So the futures price, okay, today for delivery in a year is 90. Uh, one month now for delivery in a year is, or delivery, yeah, one year from now is 75. And here, six months from now is 68. So this is contango. This is normal contango. This is the case where the futures price is above the expected spot price. And backward, normal backwardation is the opposite. This is a case where the futures price is below the expected spot, uh, expected futures price. And you can see the way we've drawn it here is that they should converge in the end. Once you get closer to expiration, you know, markets that are in normal backwardation should be rising. Markets that are in normal contango should be, the price should be falling. And at expiration, the prices should be the same for the futures and the spot price. Because if they weren't, there would be an arbitrage opportunity. So this isn't really a complicated topic. It's just some terminology that gets commonly used um, when you're talking about futures contracts. But you want to be a little bit careful about whether you're using the term normal contango or just contango or normal backwardation or simply backwardation.